Lahaina, Maui. It's the running Utes against the number 11 team in the nation, the Indiana Hoosiers. And to look at the sea of red, you'd think we were in Indiana, but we're not. Welcome once again, John Saunders along with Bill Raftery. When you look at this game for the Utes, it's trying to slow down Allen Henderson somehow. Well, they get him free with those picks and screens, and he's very good without the basketball. You can see the improvement each year. He's a solid guy that takes big shots. And when Bob Knight needs a big goal, generally the ball revolves to number 4-4, four, four, who can knock him down on the baseline, medium range, or follow shots. And they are a young team, so they'll depend on him. Utah has the freshman of the year from last year, Keith Van Horn. He's going to be fun to watch. He's got great range, a big guy that can shoot deep. He can put it on the floor and follow. A strong performer. He's going to have to have a big ball game. This is actually a very interesting matchup. Rick Majerus, the coach of Utah, you can tell he has his game face on. He's in mid-season form already. Back in a moment. Underway, the opening tap gets away, and Indiana will get it as the ball scooted out of bounds. John Saunders and Bill Raftery, Indiana against Utah. In the first round of the Maui Invitational, Alan Henderson around a little screen. What else would you expect? And he's fouled quickly. Hey, Utah opens up as expected, a little man to man, but the good use of the dribble, something typical of Indiana. They don't waste the bounce. Ben Melmoth, the big guy in the middle, the redshirt freshman, picked up the foul. Hart trapped on the, in the corner by Ma Zhen. It's Brian Evans, lets it fly, and that's it. Brian
Thanks a lot, Carl. As you can see, we've been having some technical difficulties. Apparently a storm on the West Coast, as Carl has pointed out, is causing the trouble to your, or rather on the East Coast, is causing the uh, trouble to your pitcher. But we're going to bring it to you just the same and hope that it straightens out. As you look at Bob Knight, these Hoosiers have jumped out to a 2-0 lead. Utah has the ball. Uh, Keith Van Horn is going to the goal now. Real nice player, John. He had been fouled with a follow-up just prior to that. Checking out the lineup. You look at the lineups that are on the floor right now. These are the same lineups that started the game. And then Keith Van Horn, the guy you mentioned, freshman of the year in the whack for Rick Majerus last year. Quite a player. Melmoth leans in a little hard off the glass, and Alan Henderson calls down the rebound. Steve Hart will start the break. Utah men to man. Screens, bumps, and Evans once again free. They're going to call an offensive foul on a little illegal pick down there. Well, I think Evans was held as he curled. Well, isn't it oh, no. noticeable how much quicker he is than last year? Oh, no question. Lost a few, a few pounds, freeing himself. So the foul was on Utah, not on Indiana. Ma Zhen picks up his first of the game. And Pat Knight playing a little bit of point. Occasionally off the ball. Nice little baseline cut. Hart can't convert it. Nice pass by Henderson underneath. I believe that may be Lindemann trying to crash the glass. Important that Utah run some stuff on offense to gain some confidence. Rick Majerus and watching him work out yesterday, diligently analyzing the different defensive maneuvers. Telling his kids just how hard they will have to work. Mm -hmm. Ajen lets fly with the shot. Brandon Jesse almost had the rebound, and Alan Henderson strips it away. That night, coach's son, with the handling the ball. Nice little look. Evans on the baseline move. Jen gets a piece of it. And a nice steal by Hart. Almost an opportunity goal. Well, you love Steve Hart and his tenaciousness on defense. I just think he's extraordinary. He, he gets out and rags a guy, and you may see him all alone pressing the length of the floor. Causes turnovers and an own pass. Didn't take long for Coach Knight to get up off the bench. Just letting him know his address. Melmoth from outside, and the big guy knocks it down. That's what makes them tough. All their big guys can step out and stroke it, and you got to make outside shots against Indiana. And they'll jam up that defense. You won't get any post action. Look at that flare out, wide open jumper. Decides not to take it, went in for a closer look and loses the ball. Preston starts off to Brandon Jesse, leans in and gets the roll, no call underneath. And they're going to let him play out a little bit. <laughs> and this sea of red lets him know about it. Now, Alan Henderson, I thought, passed up an open shot, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. He was open, moved in a little closer. Lindemann can't get his to go, but follows it. Nice job. Nobody put a body on the big fella. He isn't seven feet because he's got a long neck. Is that what that, Dick said? That's what <laughs> Dick Vitale is still trying to explain that one to us. The long neck taking away inches in your height, apparently. Mm -hmm. We know what he meant, though. Melvin turns around and knocks it in. Now, Lindemann trying to ride him out. Rick worked on some, man, a little small change, and they're addressing that early on this year as Jesse can't get the feet in shape. You'll see a little zone, a little box in one, trying to test Indiana, particularly if these screens are effective. Brandon Jesse picks up his first, and it's the third on Utah. Wide open. Ryan Evans. Oh, he won't miss many of those. And that one was halfway down before it rattled out. Indiana will maintain possession. He does have a sweet stroke. But I'm not talking golf. But the screens, look at the double. He pops out. I mean, that's halfway down. Van Horn with the hole, John. Trying to front Alan Henderson. And Utah early on piling up the fouls. It's the fourth team foul. And we haven't reached four minutes into the game yet. Don't you get the feeling professionally it's a big game for Rick Majerus? 
you know, playing against the body. And it, it is for anybody because of his success. Number two. Early. Or another quick one and number five on the team. Now your choices are take him out or switch the defense. Or put somebody else on Allen Henderson. Amazing. The ability, a little bit of a dummy play. You look the defender off and Keith Van Horn right under there. You're in deep trouble no matter how you spring. Anderson goes to the line to shoot two. Talk about style and dignity. Did you get a kick out of Henderson talking to Patterson before the game? Absolutely. Good. Moving the around the guy, talking yeah. to the younger guy. But he was moving him around the floor, explaining what to look for once he got in. Henderson can't get the second. Got a lane violation? That's one of my favorite calls. How about you? <laughs> it really puts a little ginger in the stocking. Absolutely. And one of the drives coaches nuts, doesn't it? You wouldn't know by his intensity. It does drive coaches nuts. That's one of the funniest human beings you'll meet. And in coaching, one of the premier stand-up guys. Well, without question, and, and as you said, you can sense that this game meant a lot to him. Well, he's got a lot of pride in his kids in program and respects the heck out of Indiana and Bob. Tough shot. Can't go much, and we expect to see him do a lot of that, though. Rick Majerus' line on him was, he identifies the open man, then ignores him. <laughs> so. uh, well, a few more of those ignoring shots hit me out, I think. Nice job by Brandon Jesse to tip that one away. Hearts after him, but Jesse Good takes play. it to the hole. A little strong with it. Preston follows, and we got it over the back, and then Melvin's went over the back. Preston up big. Uh, Jesse was unable to convert, and unfortunately, it ends up with another foul for the front line. So second on Melmoth as Rick Majerus starts to see a little foul trouble for his big man. We're tied at six. Six six, we're tied early on here at the Lahaina Civic Center, Utah in Indiana. You know, Bill, Utah is really undermanned a little bit. They're missing one of their better players from last year, Mark Rydolch, who had knee surgery back in January, averaged over 11 points a game last year. So, Rick Majerus a little short-handed in that backcourt area. He's going to expect it in December. And of course, uh, Indiana with the same problem, Sharon Wilkerson, right? Who I happen to be at the game, a great performer, competitor, and hopefully he'll be fine and continue his career. They're saying he may be redshirted for the year, mm -hmm. but they're going to make a decision back in December. Front line out now, saving the problems. Now with the Keith Van Horn with foul difficulties. Back screens, pop outs, flares. You can't rely. Look at this little low post pass. And basket. Alan Henderson. All off the ball. You're peeking, you get back screen, the kiss. Rather simple, but a little pizzazz by number four. four. 
at all is getting yourself free. Moving without the basketball. Give him the bump. And the 16th foul against Utah. So Indiana close to going into the bonus. And he fairly played five minutes in this game. But that's Bob Knight's Double, teams do that. Right. I just same thought I had. They get you in foul trouble. A Carroll can really shoot it. Doliak from and outside. Pops it down. That's a two. Turnover, Preston forces it as Matt Knight loses the ball. Brandon Jesse for three, and he bangs it home. Well, good confidence. He can play low or step outside. You can't turn it over in the open floor. That's when good things happen. Back screen by Lindemann. Nice cut by Knight. Knight turns around over top of Preston, which you would think he would be able to do this game. Preston, good quickness to the loose ball. from well outside and go and then a scramble for the rebound Jensen comes up with it he can make those though outstanding deep shooter Jimmy Carroll Jensen thinks about it lobs it into Doliak who Pretty. converts very nice setup is that the Russian offense that's <laughs> he's the only guy I've ever heard of it. it Rick went to Russia and came back with an offense we've been exporting for years and he said you said to him last night what do you call it he said what else? The rush. <laughs> what else am I going to call it? You didn't come up with a fancy name. <laughs> Nothing clever. <laughs> Evans spins, drops it for Pat Knight. Good cut pass. Nice to Hart. Get it out of here, says Jesse. And that's going to be a foul on Hart as Preston went after the loose ball. I think it should have been a goal. I thought that one was yeah, on the way down. I think down that was on the way down. And nice pass after the cut. I don't know. Uh, it's close. It's very close. close. They are getting easy shots, and you mentioned the foul problems. So when they get it on offense, is getting what they want. And now with the outside shooting, all of a sudden the high-low opens up for Rick Majerus. You saw that with Brandon Jesse, the junior college player of the year in California. Thought about Duke, thought about Arizona State, thought about Georgetown, and wound up with Rick Majerus in Utah. And loves him and loves the town. Loves it indeed. Brandon Jesse pulls up with a shot and hits him. And they love him. First a tray and, and then a bounce for two. You remember, of course, Ron Jesse used to be the wide receiver mm -hmm. with the Rams? Before my time. That's his dad. Before your time. <laughs> tough match. Tough matchup for Carol. Pardon me? I was going to say they wore leather helmets before your time. <laughs> No chin straps either. <laughs> nice cut. Look at this. Evans won't go too strong. Chip back Evans. up and in. Allen. Seven for Allen Henderson already. You know, part of the philosophy, if you move, you're going to end up a good offensive position. Because you've got the guy looking to help out, which is basic in man-to-man -man defense. And guys like Henderson able to slip in. Long time in that lane. Swinging the ball around. Brandon Jesse is where he's tough. Oh, a little hook. We got the clear. Yeah, yeah, a little hook there by Brandon Jesse to get his way loose of Hart. You do a nice job without a striped shirt. <laughs> he felt he had the size on Steve Hart. And no question, nice support there as Lindemann steps up. And that's two on Brandon Jesse, too, as foul trouble continues to bother Rick Majerus. Quickly, he's got three of his key players with two fouls apiece. We haven't reached the, reached the midway point of this first half yet. Knight with a nice pass down to Evans. Goliak thought he had a block. There's a foul down there. Uh, the problem for Rick Majerus now, John, every entry pass is off the first sequence. One bump, and they're trailing their man all the way around. Here's Evans. Manjen. Somewhat tardy, pretty good support, but you, you're gonna have to switch that. A terrific job out there. Long time assistant for Fire. I think that helped them recruit, learn how to recruit. Also got a sense of humor as well. I, I was gonna say, got him a lot of dinner dates as well. Dream team two assistant coach. He said that, that was one of the best experiences of his life. Especially with Shaq. Oh, Shaq, Shaq. Great story. A little watch given to Sha from Shaq to Rick at the end of the uh, tournament because of all he did to improve his game.
And then Shaq was upset when he wasn't wearing it the next day. He was like, you didn't sell it, did you? <laughs> Carroll lets it fly, a little long. Oh, nice job by Evans to go and get that rebound. Sure was. Put a body and go for it. Carroll a little bit long on these jumpers. Got to relax it. And Majan picks up a foul. They can't beat you out there when they're dribbling. That good judgment. That's the 10th team foul against Rick Majerus' squad now. So Indiana shoots two the rest of the way. And you know they're going to keep bumping and screening. And the first outing for one of the terrific freshmen in the country. Andre Patterson. I saw him come into the game. He one of the most recruited players in the country out of Abilene, Texas. And he'll learn at the hand of Alan Henderson. I think Bobby will have a little influence, but uh, yeah, off the floor. I'm sure Alan will be making suggestions as he rounds his game out. I can't believe how toned up Evans is. And his ability to make shots, just a little foot speed is going to make him a terrific performer this year. Six points for Evans. Indiana 7 of 7 from the line, and we're tied at 15. I bought three Aloha shirts for 12 bucks when we were playing Hawaii, and I was wearing them all summer. And my friends were laughing at me, so I just bring out my old uh, Aloha shirts, and 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 I'll, I'll wear those. Uh, you know, I don't uh, I, I don't pretend to be the arbiter of fashion in America. <laughs> You know, there are a lot of good reasons to be in Maui, but for Rick Majerus, one of the reasons was it was a good chance for him to recycle some of his old laundry. I bought three Aloha shirts for 12 bucks when we were playing Hawaii, and I was wearing them all summer, and my friends were laughing at me. So I just bring out my old uh, Aloha shirts, and, and, and I'll, I'll wear those. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, I, I don't pretend to be the arbiter of fashion in America. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, John, I'll tell you, two guys that will never go over the limit with their luggage, Rick Majerus and Bob Knight, they travel light. Well, some have to travel light. That's a great-looking shirt. Three for 12 bucks. <laughs> Doliak is loose. Count it and add the shot at the line. Uh, that's a nice call off the timeout and the entry pass baseline. Told the big fella to drop step and go to the goal. There's no question as Carroll, you've got to play him because he can shoot. But look at the pass baseline to the outstretched hand and then the swipe. And that's a little freshman inexperience. You deny, regain position defensively as Andre gets caught. Utah's first trip to the line and Goliak gets it. Seven points for him already. And they go to the zone. They'll do some different things with the wing people as they rotate. But then Top guy may play the post guy. Good job defensive, almost a five. Yeah, Michael Herman almost turns it over as well. He's a freshman out of Chicago. And will be a good player, according to sources. Who's breaking in and being new with all the intricacies is tough for Indiana. Indiana having problems with shot clock. Almost did not beat it, and then... I'll tell you, hard work rewarded 
as Henderson just gets the miss and puts in his ninth point. Well, Carroll is down checking out on that side. How about the use of the left hand by Allen? Everybody sees the ball as this man gets a tough shot. Tough oh. shot. Score to go. Tough shot, but Brandon Jesse put it home. Uh, Carroll's at the top. Keep your eye on the different spots he has to play. He'll go down and help in the post. Swing it out there. I would think there would be some open jumpers down there on the baseline. And now he ends up from the post to the wing as Jesse takes the middle. Oh, yeah, if you move the ball, they're going to get some good looks. Good ball fake. Shot is long, though, and Brandon Jesse comes away with the rebound. Carroll tries to save it but cannot do it, and it's a turnover, the third of the game for the Utes. And you wonder, Terry Preston, what can he do? Why be in a hurry? John Chaney, right? Speed kills, that yep. theory. He can't do anything. Just relax, keep the ball, get it organized. That's what Rick Majerus is saying to him. Steve Hart comes back into the game as the freshman Herman will go to the bench. Nice Oliak break. gets a breather. I was just saying that nice rotation, trying to save his guys, both energy and foul problems. Rick Majerus is substituting. Staying in that zone. It's really a matchup in a sense. Wherever they happen to post up, the middleman goes down, the wing people are very active. You can't leave Evans alone, though. He'll run at him. Anderson dumps it down to Hart. Short with the shot. Carroll out of the corner who has been bold, and that one doesn't touch anything. He is pumped. Can stroke it, and he'll make a lot of those during the course of the year. Just has to relax, get a little composure. Evans wide open, and forget it. You leave him that open. What do you think? <laughs> think they discussed that? Oh, you got to stay home. Let others catch and load. Not Brian. Jesse again. Terry Preston puts it home. They got to identify in the zone right now. They're worried about the post people with Evans on the wing. Good high low there. Anderson. So. Oh. Living a pretty good target in there. In many respects, as he plays, so will Indiana go this year. Oh, without question. They work hard. Not selling little. A little slap there by Henderson on the pass, but Ron has worked hard for two years with him. He's got nice low post shot, can make jumpers. I'll tell you what, Brandon Jesse got lucky there that Henderson got a piece of that mm -hmm. because that pass was going to nobody. Dr. Bamba on the sideline. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jesse on the baseline, too strong. Allen Henderson with the rebound. Henderson and Evans at 20 of Indiana's 22 points thus far. Lindemann can't get it to go, but he'll get a trip to the foul line. Is that an improvement? How about running the floor, gets to the box, and Evans, who they're going to run at, stepping under and finding a big fella. Right here, a little slip, and they're very alert, though. Get out, don't let him shoot it. But if Lindemann hadn't worked, this doesn't go down, he wouldn't be at the foul line. Lindemann with a chance to tie the game now after missing the first one. That's the first free throw that Indiana has missed, and he gets the second one. We're tied at 23 apiece. Jensen looking for a little help. Chapman tries to come to the ball. Utah does a nice job reversing the ball and setting up their offensive man or their offensive set shot clock is down to 10 good cross right Jesse nice help there by Indiana and Evans and then they get a foul boy did they close on him quickly or they recovered <laughs> and Jesse relieved that he got the foul too I mean he was wide open with a lane to the basket here's the ball reversal sets up the offensive here it comes well Evans but they had Lindemann right behind them. Three people closing quickly. Speed, such a factor. 
That's just the sixth team foul, so the next one, and there it is, will send them to the line. Dick Henderson, too. That's two on Allen Henderson now. One of the great looks in college basketball, huh? There are messages with those eyeballs. Here's the little back screen. And the step good. Step in, duck in. And Henderson caught, unfortunately, on the right, well, the right side, but just couldn't get over the top. Fighting hard to get back into defensive position, and that's what cost him. He missed the free throw. Jensen gets the follow. Kept alive, and Jesse has it. He pressed it. Oh, they got some blood. Alan Henderson must have taken a shot. Oh, boy, did he ever. Yeah. Did he ever, because the blood is streaming down the side of his face rather quickly. That came out in a hurry. Must have caught an elbow. We'll try and see if we can get a look at it. But we're tied at 23 apiece back in a moment. You want to set it up? Okay. Well, John Saunders, uh, an inadvertent elbow, and normally you'd say by a Utah player. But we found Phil Jackson, Bill Cartwright used to foul their own guys. And here Todd Lindemann comes in from the rear, and that's his elbow that comes down across Allen Henderson. It was good, clean basketball no matter who struck the blow. But it means more when it's your own guy. I'll tell you what. And like a fighter, that one, the position it is on his face near the eye there, where there's a lot of bone, that might be tough to stop. Great from cut starting man, up though, again. huh? <laughs> oh, the Bayonne bleeder, Chuck Webner, huh? But he looks pretty good. Dr. Brad Bama, who's been with Indiana and various travel squads. Jesse, that's a three. Oh, oh. So nice job by Van Horn to get the rebound. He's back in there. Jensen sends it back out. Uh, Van Horn has to be intelligent on offense and make sure he doesn't go over the top. They don't want him to get number three. Now, this is tough for Lindemann because this kid can put it on the floor and shoot. Nice. Oh. Take that, Bill Rafferty. Tough for me. I'll just swap <laughs> that one away. I can guard anybody. Knight swings it across to Evans. Knight leans in and rolls it home. Well, when you get minutes, you get confidence. I thought he looked good in the workout yesterday. Different kind of player. Knows he's got the spot, can contribute. Usually you say he's a great passer. He can make that shot and penetrate a little bit. He really has become a pretty good player. Fifth-year senior. Think of uh, how tough it's been for him over the years to get into this starting position. And his dad's real proud of how hard he's worked to get to that point. And he works in just like he does the other players. They got a little foul away from the ball, and it's against Utah. I think a three-second call. Three seconds. Oh, three seconds. That would have been Van Horn's okay, start. Yeah. I want to remind everybody that coming up following this game, 
between Rick Majerus and his squad in Indiana. We will have Tulane against Michigan. Wolverines ranked number 13 in the nation, down to the Fab Two now. So they have five new outstanding freshmen. And Tulane has always a quick team that will make you work up and down the floor. Oh, what a great job. The curl. Evans very active. Uses the big guy to free himself. Indiana now with a four-point lead. That's the largest they've had in this game. Goliak turns around. A little strong. Knight with the rebound. They got to kick that pass out. Get a hard charge to the goal. Pass it back out to a wide open Evans. That was out by us. I don't know if they give Lindham in the push here. That was out near court by Evans. <laughs> he says, I'm open though. Once you get it into the center area on Indiana, they're going to collapse. I mean, they're taught to help out and jam down there, scratch. And Utah has to recognize, Doliak has people opposite for little 10, 12, 15-foot jumpers. Lindeman in his second. Like fine wine, the test of time. Huh? That guy on the sidelines, I happen to coach against him at Army. He's a lot darker. Trimmer. And? And won anyhow. The I mean, that still didn't change. <laughs> the results were the same. The defense was always the trademark. Everything else grew out of that. He used to have the colonel saluting. Him. <laughs> Back to a two-point game now. Inside baseline bumps. Evans will curl. He flared out that time. Here he is again. Great footwork. Lindemann. They get the foul against Jensen. Number two on him. The fouls just keep piling up. Got the three inside people all have two each. Four of them, I should say. The activity set this up. Evans able to get a passing lane. Good support. Unfortunately, reaching by Jensen. Jimmy Carroll back in the game. The Utah coaches will argue as to whether or not Lindemann had the ball. Whether well, or not that was a free ball. Buddy looked like he had his mitts on him. Getting better, isn't he? He really has. Oh, this game. A tribute to hard work. And he looks like a good listener when the coaches are explaining things to him. This is both free throws, though, and Van Horn has the rebound. Utah has really been unable to get Van Horn involved. Of course, he had the early foul mm -hmm. trouble, but got to figure he's got to score for them to have a chance to win. He does. And Patterson helping out. Mike, nice little back up by Van Horn. He's pretty good without the ball, too. Preston with a harsh delivery. He's got to relax a little bit. Curry. We've seen a lot of that in, in the first three games of the tournament, and that's, we're reminded that it's the first mm -hmm. game for everybody. Boy, that's... Telltale, huh? I'll tell you what, and that's oh. surprising as well because Utah expects to get a lot of their points up front. Evans spins around Carroll. He's cut off at the baseline and hits the shot anyway. Doesn't matter. Well, that's what impressed me last year. He started to dribble to free himself. Now, the ability to get free quickly is what's intriguing. Nice little entry pass, and Patterson reaches around the back. Two of his mistakes have been on the defensive end, Patterson. Mentioned the ability to get free. Gets Patterson on the high side, able to use his derriere and ward him off. But he's also good at stepping to the foul line and back cutting. Utah hasn't had a field goal in almost five minutes. If you told the Jarris that Van Horn would have this struggling first half and he's knocking at the door, he wouldn't believe you. This is a very good basketball player. First little point. What amazed me looking at the tape, his three-point shooting ability, John. Oh, yeah. He can, he can come outside and let it fly. And Rick not chancing, huh? Yankson goes two. 
smart play by Van Horn. Charlie Miller with the ball now for Indiana. Now the little hand check. Small change. McCurry's basement. <laughs> but they're accentuating it. Hank Nichols. A point of emphasis. Yeah, Hank, Hank said to you before the first game, no more nickel dimers. Leave your roll of quarters home. <laughs> because we got to call them. <laughs> well, they're trying to get players to use their feet. And, uh, back from the Civil War. <laughs> Neil Reed, all he's missing is the bandage on the head and the fife and drum. Because <laughs> oh, this, he, the Civil War episode, he's got shin splints, shoulder out of whack, high school All-American. Two-time Louisiana Player of the Year. Neil. Another one that's going to be a very good player for Bob Knight. Can't shoot it. Neil out of Mitzere, Louisiana. Evans gambles. They always help, so you can take a chance. Good penetration. Oh, oh leans in, count it. Yeah, they're sending it the other way. Well, they are. They called the goal. Yeah. Called the goal. And the charge. And charge. Well, didn't say Andre Patterson long to learn to keep the big guy happy on the sideline. Pay attention to the bounce. Good call, too, huh? Yep. Little bang banger question he had the position nice to see a high school all-american doing the dirty stuff Majen checks back into the game Utah has six players now with two fouls Patterson goes the line he'll shoot two because Utah well over that double bonus now this is a band-aid 419 for Rick Majerus you mentioned all the foul problems. Do you think he's checking his roster or looking to order dinner? <laughs> Maybe a little both. Well, he's had a yo-yo beautifully just to keep hanging. Three-point game as we approach the four-minute mark left in the first half. Carroll, nice entry to Doliak. Sure was. Uh, Doliak, that may have been an offensive foul, believe it or not, the way he backed them in, but good basketball. Particularly if you get away with it. Walk. Yep. yep. Patterson taking a couple of little steps before he put the ball on the floor. We've got a timeout right now. It's just a one-point game. We've got a good one here in Maui. It's the first round of the Maui Invitational. John Saunders along with Bill Raftery here. And Indiana has a one-point lead for Bob Knight and the Hoosiers. Giants and the Oilers. What else would you expect from those two teams and what they're having this year other than a scoreless game? In two the first struggling half? clubs. They really are. I mean, mentioned the problems for Utah with Cal, but Allen Henderson out in the post and back cut by Manjen. Very confident, isn't he? 
Comes into the baseline. Oh, nice pass. I mean, he didn't have a lot of choice there. And he stepped on the end line. Scouting, huh? Word of mouth. Nobody has seen one another. And Hart got out quickly on Carroll because if he starts lighting it up, it's going to help Utah loosen up that interior defense. Alan Henderson not in the game. If you weren't with us earlier, he took an elbow around the eye area from his own teammate, Todd Lindemann. He has 11 points and 7 rebounds. He's sitting on the bench now with a little bandage on the eye, getting a breather. Once again, the post pass. Well, they are getting good shots. Carroll to Hanson to Jensen as they swing it around. Slice, cut, pop out, and he got a good look. No. Carroll has not been able to find the range at all today, on that long jumper at least. But well, reads in pain as he runs up the floor. Those shin splints. Anybody that has had them can relate. They are off. Nice job by Charlie Miller to lead in. Well, that was not designed. And there's the butterfly look. Alan Henderson had taken that elbow. I don't think Miller will be doing that all game, do you? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Great nice play. Nice back cut. Oh, launch in. All he had to do was lay it up and in. He went for the explosive tuck and got the back iron. Oh. <laughs> well, that's the way to go with the goal, though. But you got to convert. Or, you know, it's high. They cleared out the back. Nobody can help. And a lot of egg yolk on the brow on that one. Whew. Got to finish. You just lay it up, huh? Well, I can't you know. believe you'd say that. With your aggressive nature. Good denial here. Causes the turnover. Coming up at halftime, the Jarrett Cheers on Maui Invitational highlights the scores, and we'll take a look at the smallest player in Division One. I. I think I know. I, think you know, I know the school. I think it's Dayton. Under five feet. Up. I think he's yeah smaller than Bugsy. Yep. Shot clock down to three as Hart lets it go to get it back, and Patterson fires it in. Oh, that's going to help him. I mean, going to the goal is very important, but getting the deuce to relax him. They're running the shuffle now. And here come the Hoosiers, folks. And I don't mean the team. <laughs> I mean this crowd. On my, off the beach. Hart is tremendous defensively. Majan, Chapman, swings it back out for Hansen. Long with it. Comes right to Lindemann. Utah needs a stop. Nice little run by Indiana right now. And the grab, I think, by Preston. The activity off the ball is what sets up their whole game. You don't stand still. You look to help one another. Invariably, the screener is the guy that frees himself. Neil Reed will go to the line as Preston just picked up his first foul. I want to talk about fouls. Now that's <laughs> deuces are wild. Yeah, you do well with that in Vegas, John. <laughs> and all the coaches, both coaches, making sure those guys are well hidden, or at least using good judgment when they're in the game. I'll tell you what. With all those deuces that you mentioned, Rick Majerus will be very excited if he can get to halftime without any of those turning over to a three. Mm -hmm. And Reed with that show. First thing I thought of was Brian Evans when I walked in the gym and right. saw that shoulder harness. A McDonald's All-American. Can't make either of the free throws though. I'd be a little conservative now if I'm Utah. I'd like to get a real good basket. Nice play in a passing lane by Reed. Carroll with a heads up play shielding off, huh? Yeah, but he, he could get called for a foul mm -hmm. for doing that as well. He got away with it. Twenty left on the clock. The outside shot, Jensen. Indiana with a five-point lead now, under a minute left in the half. 
some activity underneath. Goalie action nailed for the foul. Yeah, one of those unnecessary ones, but you get tired chasing people. That's his second. What else? Seven players with two fouls, and Mike Swanson, our crack stats man, says that we should be on ESPN 2. <laughs> Clever. With all of the twos here as Bobby Eggers heads up. It's nice to see Swanee off the beach, too. <laughs> Indiana now missed the last four free throws in a row, yeah. Could be a nine-point ball game if they had knocked them down. Right. About two seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Go, go, go. Carroll comes out. And Utah trying to get it down to those final two seconds as well. Preston nowhere to go, and Robbie Eggers commits the foul. They really didn't have to do that. They help so well. If you don't get there, just turn and trail the guy. They're going to get some support. Uh, the quicker little guy, I mean, you're, you're at. Now, what he should have done is giving ground. Somebody would have closed down, plus the size differential. Preston would have a tough time getting it off. Plus only six seconds of around mm -hmm. on the shot clock. He was going to have to force something. The free throw shooting's gone a little cold here mm -hmm. at both ends of the floor. Now Utah's got to feel real good with the foul problems and you know Van Horn to speak up. And you get your legs. Check those numbers, huh? Not surprising again with Indiana. They usually go to the line. They make as many as the other team attempts usually. Hart, I don't think, realized how little time was left. Patterson, oh, it rattles around, nearly goes in. So at halftime, we have a four-point lead for the Indiana Hoosiers. Rick Majerus and his squad with some work to do in the locker room. Right now, let's go back to Carl Ravage. and just knocked away at the last moment by Davis intended for Isaac Bruce who had him beat by a step this is a nice job by Eric Davis playing the ball Isaac Bruce comes out now he, they're arm fighting good incidental contact Davis just does a terrific job of going up and maybe just getting a fingernail yep, yep. got that little pinky on it knocked it away Third and 12 for Miller. Has to scramble, throws on the run complete, but it's going to be short of the first down. Kinchin makes the catch. Now let's check the mark. Maybe close enough to measure. And it will be. Kenshin has made some big plays tonight. That was a nice scramble by Miller as well, Mike. He gets pushed to the left. Kenshin just continuing to work. Does a good job releasing inside of Hanks. Now, he just keeps coming and coming. He sees his quarterback in trouble. Now he works to an open area. And almost looking at the down marker, leaves the ball right there for the official. All they had to do was get to the 37. And they did. Nice job by Miller and Kinchin. A fresh set of downs for the Rams. And more importantly, it keeps Young and Rice off the field. 
They've got all kinds of different ways to do it. Basically, Jerome Bettis' running will be taken out of the game with a 12-point lead. So you want to spot him. Can't give up on it completely. Bettis, that time it was a seven-man front, and they still handle him. The tackle by the rookie, Bryant Young. Everybody was talking about where Deion Sanders was going to go play football as he went on his tour. He wound up here in San Francisco, and he's been such a great addition. By coming in and being the cover corner and talking to Merton Hanks, Deion got here and basically said, I've got my side of the football field. You guys go do whatever you have to do. And that's been the approach that the defense has taken. They're allowed to double cover the people away from Dion, and he's created a much more effective defensive scheme. Derek Davis, the other corner. Bettis on the screen. Room to run. Gets up ahead of steam and has a first down in oh, midfield. I, I, I get so excited when I see somebody do something smart. Jerome Bettis on the screen, he doesn't just catch the ball and turn blindly. Watch what he does. He will turn, turn around, hesitate for a second. Watch this. Bettis is looking at, now watch what he does. This is great. See how he turns? He doesn't take off and run. He hesitates. He sets up the blocks for his lineman. Then he makes the run. This is just great running. See how he pauses? Now he starts. That's a great screen run. And what a lot of fun he is to talk to. A very engaging young man at a great point. From midfield. Miller airs it out again. Intended and caught by Slipper Anderson. Sanders got lost. And Anderson has the touchdown. He was right with him, Joe, and then hesitated, slowed down a step. 50-yard touchdown. We always talk about Deion Sanders baiting people, right? Flipper Anderson baits Deion. He stops to let him think that the ball is coming down right here. See a little hesitation? And now he accelerates past him. Boy, that's a great job of receiving. You know, if you're a gunfighter, every now and then you're going to get wounded. And Deion got wounded on that one. Coming into this game, Flipper Anderson was second in the league, averaging almost 22 yards a catch. That'll help the average. And they'll go for one. Zendejas knocks it through. And the Rams cut it to 24-19. And for one of the rare times, Deion Sanders burned for a score. Super Bowl tickets. First in line. Who are you? Number one fan, the guy in the front row. Missed the 50-yard line. I'll give you 500 bucks. No, there's no cuts. I got a football cooler. I got the same one. I got a beautiful Jimmy Johnson thermos. Mine's got the lifelike hair. Yeah, I'm going to go grab an extra value meal at McDonald's. You want some? I'll tell you what, I do just about anything for a quarter pound of a cheese. Anything? Yeah. I got a quarter pounder, fella. Great. Mr. Number two fan. An Egg McMuffin's going to sound really good in the morning. Truck. We built a reputation for truck strengths. A considerable advantage that also comes in this handy take home size. Sierra from GMC Truck. Happy holidays. Steve Brown for Allied, and we're unwrapping the greatest holiday gift ever. 20% off everything in every Allied store. Four days only, this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 20% off everything. It's Allied's gift to you, and we'll be happy to hide your early holiday buys with Allied's free layaway. Apply now for instant credit. 60 days free interest with Allied's preferred customer credit card. Four days only. Allied in Murray, Sandy, West Valley, and Tooele. If we don't have it, you don't need it. There's one of those guys that says, as a defensive back, you have to have a short memory. He hasn't forgotten it yet, though. He's still steaming. He's mad at himself, and he's thrilled. Flipper Anderson did a great job. You know, there's a sense of satisfaction when you go up against guys that are the best in the business, and you out-execute them. That gives you a, an, an added shot of adrenaline saying, wow, this is all right. And anytime anybody goes up against Dion, they have to feel like the ultimate challenge is laid out in front of them. But there's no way he'll sulk. He'll just go back out and try to make another play. 
Lovell and Carter are deep, and we have a game at 24-19. Carter from the 20. Has a seam. Flag is down. And Carter all the way into Ram territory at the 46. Now we'll check the penalty. It's going to be holding against the 49ers. receivers 10 yards first of 10. Red Cashin wasn't going to let Antonio Goss number 98 sneak by him. There he is number 98 right in the middle of your picture going to tackle Lang. I don't know what he got up trying to politic about. That was a, that was a great tackle. Great tackle. But it pushes San Francisco back inside their own 25. Out in the flat complete to Jones. Minimal gain. Tomorrow night, of course, 7.30 is NFL Prime Monday. Mike Tirico, Don Jackson, Phil Sims. They'll preview the Monday night game between the Giants and the Oilers. Live reports from the Dome. Pam Oliver, Ron Jaworski, has with the NFL Playbook. And downtown Julie Brown goes backstage with Giants linebacker Carlton Bailey. All that and more Prime Monday. Tomorrow night. And we have a prime ball game right here. Young with play action waters. Right in the middle of five rams. Ricky Waters nailed out of bounds and the flag comes down. That'll get 15 more. What a great job downfield though by the wide receivers, the tight end. And holy mackerel was Floyd down there helping him as well. William Floyd, his backfield mate. It's one thing to give up a big play. Unnecessary roughness. Number 26 on the defense. 15 yards. First down. Anthony Newman, the free safety. It's another thing to tag it on. The play in itself is good, Mike. Young fakes to Floyd. Now, Floyd's sitting down about four yards. Rick, Ricky Waters is down the field 20 yards. Watch this. Right part of your screen. Who's out there blocking Floyd? Look at Floyd. Look at William Floyd. Look at Brent Jones. And look at the yards after the catch because of the extra effort. And there's 15 more. Spotted at the Rams 25. Here comes the reverse to Rice. Young throwing a block. They'll still only get a couple. Steve Young threw one of those great quarterback, I'm going for your ankles block. No, 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 no. That was actually a good block. That wasn't one. Oh, I didn't say it wasn't a good block, but he didn't go up around the shoulder pads either. Nah, but it was a, he got the guy on the ground. Lower left of your screen against Gerald Robinson. There he is, Steve Young coming out. Throw that right shoulder through. Get that guy on the ground. Oh, devastating. See, that as a quarterback, that's devastating. Devastating, yes, sir. That's what you say in the quarterback meetings. <laughs> that's right. Still only a gain of three in second and seven. Play action. Young to his second receiver, and Taylor was going deep. He thought he was going to pull up. Bailey, the closest man to it for the Rams. I think it's the only bad pass Steve Young's thrown tonight. And, you know, you wonder, was it a bad pass or was just throwing the ball away? I mean, he had the guy right in front of him, the defensive guy. It was him and the other, so he just turns and throws it. Remember, if you're in the pocket, you're allowed to throw the ball past the line of scrimmage, and it's not intentional grounding. You don't need a receiver in the area. Look at the numbers on Steve Young, a couple drops.